Morning everyone, Nicky Hawkins, West Ham Fan TV um, I, I, As I guess you might have heard, Monday Musings will be up later Because uh, we did discuss this in Monday Musings But um, last night we was invited by uh, West Ham United Now I must iterate this, West Ham United invited us You know, we didn't invite them, uh, we didn't instigate it uh, West Ham United invited us to have a, um, a sit down meeting and to discuss problems that uh, we all have at the London Stadium as fans, you know, to take feedback from us and to take um, opinions and uh, uh, experiences that we've either experienced ourselves or heard from different people um, at their London Stadium and to try and make them better. Now, I must say this. It's a massive step forward for a club. You know, we are the club's biggest critics. Um, I must admit, when they first gave me the call, I was quite sceptical about what it would be. I was quite sceptical about what we would actually get to discuss, how openly would we get to discuss it. Um, I thought there was going to be uh, a load of uh, an agenda set out and, you know, just being paid lip service. But um, I've got to give the club credit. As I say, I'm the first to... Uh, I'm the first to criticise the club um, when they do things wrong but um, this is a monumental uh, step uh, by the club and I, I believe this is the first of, of, of any Premier League club actually to actually invite um, people into a room you know with the, the vice chairman to discuss issues we have now um, believe you me I wouldn't have gone I was very sceptical about what it was and I said to to Ryan if they asked me to sign uh, a confidentiality agreement about what's discussed in the room that I wouldn't do it and I would walk out. Um, they didn't ask us to do that actually, they encouraged us to talk about um, a lot of the things on the agenda. Now what happened was was um, we was in a very intimate room with Karen Brady, Karen Brady was sitting two people away from me so that's how close uh, we were. Um, so she sat down and she just, half past five, it was supposed to finish at half past seven. It went on to uh, more or less quarter to nine. So we uh, we went in there and we wanted to put across some of the stuff that you had had experienced and, and you know, tell them what was happening down on the concourses and, you know, to try and make it better. Now, first thing that came up was shooting obviously uh, there was a lot of stuff that came up uh, I might not remember some but across uh, I know various people were taking notes hammers chat uh, I've got a video up already discussing some of the stuff they've done it straight after the meeting last night um, you know there was better place to remember some of the stuff but I'll tell you the main parts that I took from last night so the stewarding I wanted to know what the occurring with the stewarding was um, why they were so heavy-handed um, do we control them what we're going to do about you know, improving the stewarding. Now, um, first off, um, she she you know she, she she faced it head on. You know, um, she said, "Right, we don't control the stewarding. The stewarding is controlled by the license is held by someone that works for the uh, LS eight one eight five, I think it was, um, and at West Ham, not didn't have a lot of control over it, but you know." the license wasn't held by them so anything that that was decided was not just decided by the LS185 but you know West Ham have set out a certain amount of guidelines to them now I iterated to them that if they were setting out guidelines because you know we'll all agree that the steward in Upton Park was very um, was was very uh, efficient was very customer friendly was very fan friendly um and, and things like that so we, we you know we we wholly agreed that the, the stewards at Upton Park were very good um now what can we do about improving it and, and how do they intend to improve it now um West Ham are trying to get these um they're trying to get these Upton Park stewards back involved in this sort of thing by you know implementing in them in areas where it's more um, 
not vol I wouldn't say volatile, but where it's more boisterous. So, so block one one three one one four, uh, block one one nine one one eight, uh, things like that. So, they want to uh, implement, you know, up some park stewards in there, which I've, we all agreed. I think was a good idea to get you know old school Upton Park stewards who, you know, were fans of the club, were fans of um, you know, a, a, and had a, a, a decent relationship and understand how fans react at football. Now, it was admitted that some of the stewards there, um, they are um, football stewards. They 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 said that, but they're not West Ham stewards and. You know the way we act to other football clubs sometimes can be a little bit different, um, and th it was agreed that there would be an understanding, there'd be more of a uh, relationship between fans and stewards, and and you know, and we then become the contact points between them. So it is encouraged. They encouraged us to you know be their eyes and ears. They encouraged us to let them know what's going on, and they promised that they would face these head on and they would improve these immediately um, which I thought was was decent you know and, and, and what this does if you if you think that they're paying lip service what this does is this gives people like us who are very much neutral in the facts that not neutral <laughs> not neutral always a matter of fact um, I'm on the fan side I am a fan I'm on the fan side um, and you know I think that it's been disgusting, the treatment of some of the fans at, at, at the football. But what West Ham have done, they've promised, they've promised to meet this head on. And, and by telling us, and, and you know, we, we was in the room and we saw that she'd heard these problems. Now, you know, some of the stuff she hadn't heard, some of the stuff she had heard, um, and was, you know, had put um, things in place to, to change it, but it hasn't changed and. Obviously, she can't get the feedback. So, what it is, it, it, it's setting up that feedback with the liaison officers, with us now. Um, you know, things that we say and heard will be met directly because they're very important and serious things. Um, so, what they do is by by opening this avenue, it, it, it's a massive. Like, don't underestimate the, uh, the, the the occasion because it's a monumentous occasion. Because what she's doing now is opening up a avenue for direct communication like via us you know we are um some of the people best placed to hear about these stuff you know kumb hammers chat you know we can take the stories and the videos and, and 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 all that stuff directly to them so it opens up an avenue so they can't you know when when we say you know and we've been the biggest thing by saying this you know you know oh, they don't watch it they they ignore it you know they can hide behind it they can't hide anymore because we have direct access and communication. That shows to me that West Ham are taking a positive step. Now, that's all we've ever asked, to make the experience better for the fans, you know, to stop damning the fans. The next thing, uh, one of the next things we discussed, uh, we, we discussed a load of little stuff as well, which, you know, is going to be immediately implemented, um, as well as the shooting stuff, uh, stuff like shelving on the sides of the Olympic Stadium so we can put our beers and sausage rolls and things like that on it and we don't have to hold it in the bloody cold concourse. Um, little things like the, the, the time it takes to queue up to get a, a, a beer at half time and, and um, you know, the, the amount of time it takes to sort of drink it, go to the toilet and everything like that. And they're going to put things in place now where, you know, it's going to become a lot quicker in that. But there was, you know, major issues. The grey blocks around the sides of the stadium. You know, what we're going to do about them? Can we cover them in claret and blue? They said, just we we wanted to, we wanted to cover them in claret and blue. So why didn't you then? Because the stadium have, have we have held it because um, eventually they're going to get a, a, a naming right to the stadium, and you know that area is designated to the branding of the stadium when they get the naming rights done. What can we do about it anyway? Um, can we hang flags there? That's what someone raised. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but can we hang our flags there? You know, we want it to feel more like the home of West Ham United. She said, certainly. Um, you know, they can bring flags in. And, uh, and then the issue was raised again about the stewarding and the standards of stewarding. You know, what happens if they start refusing them? Well, she said, well, there can't be any um, sort of like foul language. She didn't say negative language. She said foul language, you know, like uh, with swear words on it and whatever. But if... 
we want to have flags they've designated someone um, and you can ask me you can private message me if you've got flags and stuff that will put these flags up on the um, the grey areas to, to you know to make it feel more filled in to make it feel like the home of West Ham and West Ham have, have said that they'll take the flags in themselves and put them out themselves um, every game so they've taken that responsibility on themselves you know as I say these things are being implemented immediately um, they're gonna they're gonna do this and uh, you know we, I think we'll all agree that um, you know that we we brought up that there was some mistakes made in the past and they agreed they agreed that there was some make, mistakes made now that's a, a, another um, a strong thing is the fact that they're now admitting that there have been mistakes made and they haven't done things as well as they could have um, uh, because they haven't done things as well as they could have because, you know, the fans are not having a good experience and that's what it should be about. The football should be about the fans having the true experience. So they admitted that and that's the first time I've heard them admit that, which was very refreshing. Um, there was also a issue raised. There were so many issues raised. The plus two scheme, I put the plus two scheme in there. You know, why was it done like that? Why, you know, why was, you know, it, it dotted around and, and you know, people told more or less where they're going to sit and you know not getting the the open access to to where you're sitting because other people that haven't been before are getting access and you know they didn't tell us everything we wanted to hear um they wasn't just nodding their heads along you know she kept a, a firm stance that that was the right thing to do um which i disagreed with I, I think that there should have been a different system in place um there was a system in place where obviously band one tickets went first i think it should have been more on the time that you've spent at upton park the, the, the amount of times you've held season tickets there, the amount of time um you know if you've held a ticket there for 20 years and you you're in band three i th i feel you should have been more entitled to pick where you see than someone who's paid a thousand pound for the last for the last season you know but that's just me they reiterate their stance and i can understand their stance to a certain point uh i wasn't happy with everything they said but you know that was um maybe something to bring up again it, it it's something that really can't be fixed now the only thing they did say was you know come the end of the season there will be a massive uh a lot of people have been moved now of course and they want to bring back 114 block 114 um they're pushing for that and that uh, come the end of the season, they're going to have a, a, a major thing into people relocate into you know the actual seats that they want to sit. So positive steps there, positive steps. Um, what else did we discuss? Uh, Martin Samuel, the Martin Samuel stuff on the media. Um, I said that wasn't it was uninformed to put that up. I said it was it was pretty crass. It was pretty uh, damning. I, I don't think they should be supporting um, uh, someone with such views that that is you know it made them look good but it's very damning to the fans i said you know in the same week that you promised to to sort of like take fans um, more in consideration which this meeting was a very positive step in doing that um you then published an article by martin samuel that called us a load of you know deluded idiots more or less um she admitted she hadn't seen it and that was something for the media team to look at um <laughs> and promised it would be um it would be looked at now what i got out of this meeting i got out of this meeting that west ham have have uh they finally accepted that everything's not all rosy at the at, at the olympic stadium you know all this nonsense about the the, the, the greatest stadium migration ever um i think they're starting to realize that you know although logistically it's probably gone well um, in terms of fans, it's not gone well. And I think this is a way to bridge it. Now, as I said before, I'm the first to um, insult the club. And I will continue, not insult the club, but pull the club up on things they do wrong. And I will continue to do that. Um, I'm not been influenced. We haven't been trying to been buy it, bought off. We haven't had our, you know, our season tickets paid for or anything like that for you know negativity. Uh, no negativity. Well, I haven't. I can't speak for everyone else, but I'm, you know, I'm pretty 99% sure they haven't either. But what I do 
think this 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 does is this opens up an avenue and they've took a brave step in doing this because um, no longer can they say that they're not receiving this, no longer can they say that they're not seeing it because everything that we get, we can pass on directly and they have to, um, you know, they have to meet it head on. And I think it's, you know, I think it's a, a bold step by West Ham because if there's something that we speak about that's not being implemented, now we know we've we've heard from the top. We haven't heard rumours upon rumours, and it ain't been passed down from source to source. We hear directly from the top now that they've they've heard these things, and if they're not implemented, you know, serious questions can be can be asked why, and if they can't do what we ask, um, and 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 sort it out, why can't you, you know, and don't underestimate this because this is a big day. This is a big day for us as fans. This is a big day. Uh, this is the day I feel, you know, Crystal Palace was a very good atmosphere. You know, I raised up the uh, the Wally Downs Jr. Um, article in the Sun saying that, you know, why don't we challenge these things and why, you know, why do we let them get away with it? You know, we, we talked about access, you know, letting us have access to certain things and, you know, so we can come from the horse's mouth. We spoke that, we, we said that to them that although we came across as negative, if you stopped doing negative things, you know, we wouldn't have to talk about the negative and we can actually, you know, we're all vying to do the same thing if, if that's what they're in there for. You know, we want to drive West Ham United forward. We want to make it the best West Ham United we can. And they agreed. They agreed that that's what they want to do. So instead of having this conflict, instead of ignoring us, they've sort of embraced us and embraced you in doing that as well because... Our channel certainly belongs to everyone, belongs to you. You know, we try and do the fairest things to the fans and I think they've took a brave step in in, in, in doing that. So hopefully um, this can start to be not swept under the carpet. Um, you know, there are some things that they've done that, you know, I, I still to this day don't believe are right, don't believe um, that they've done properly, maybe can never go back on that. But, you know, from this day forward, we need to start to make sure that you know it is the best experience that they can you know we talk about uh, another thing we spoke about transport links you know getting people to the stadium that can't necessarily walk there there's some people that suffer you know people that don't necessarily have disabled badges but um you know can't physically walk to the stadium they said they'd look into not promising anything but they'd look into getting more buses laid on and letting people get on them buses as well um very positive steps by the club, I must say. Uh, as I said before, I'm the first to, to pull them up on things, so I'll be the first to um, not congratulate them, but to you know to to accept that they, they are trying to do things. Um, and the thing is now, if they don't implement these things, we've spoken to them directly, if they don't implement these things, you know, we can ask why. Why aren't these things being implemented? You said that they was going to do this. You said that they was going to do that. We're not hearing this information third hand anymore. We're hearing it directly from the top. If they don't implement it, we can start asking the questions why. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, we still are impartial. <laughs> don't worry about that. I know that um, some people are alluding to, you know, all the people that in the room last night have been bought off. Trust me, that ain't the case. You'll still be seeing the same sort of thing from West Ham Fan TV. But I've got to tell you when the stuff is positive. You know, I so, talk so much about the negative. This is positive. This is a big step for West Ham. Um, and this is the West Ham that, you know, we want. This is the West Ham that we are striving to, to, to be. You know, we want to make the club better for everybody. You know, we want to see better players. We, we didn't talk about the playing staff last night. I must say that because I don't think it would have been fair to raise that. You know, that was on everyone's lips, of course. But it wouldn't be fair to raise that with someone that doesn't really have a lot to do with transfers. Um... Uh, maybe we can implement that. They've agreed to meet us again. Uh, they felt the meeting went very well. They've agreed in principle to meet us uh, every three months. But they did reiterate if the stuff that we spoke about is not being implemented straight away, and that they're not they're not doing these taking these steps to change it. You don't feel that the stuff is changing. You can talk to us, and then we'll relay it to them, and they will deal with it personally, which I think is very good. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this. Um, just a quick video really look out for the Monday musings we're going up to Middlesbrough on Saturday look out for that uh, FIFA preview Scott's preview transfer dealings um, and on the social we'll be going up 
But thank you very much for watching. One thing left to say, come on you irons. <laughs>